Okay, now we've got the PDO brake housing out and on the bench here. Uh, I, I suppose the thing to do would be just tell you a little bit on how it works. And on this shaft, on the main shaft here, the PDO clutch pack actually sits down and the splines line up and it sits down into this housing here. Now the two pipes here, um, if you remember the front one here, well the, the top one looking from there was a PDO brake. So there's a hole there that will go in and expand this piston. And the PDO clutch pack, when the oil comes through here, it goes between these ceiling rings and, and into the clutch pack. So it'll be, oh, oh it's heavy. Now if we have a look, if I can show you just in there, it's a bit of that side of this side. There you go, you can just see the hole there in the shadow. Maybe we can roll it around so you can get a better view. But look, it's just, it's just there, you can just see the shine of it. And that lines up directly with this port here. So the oil comes in this port, it comes in to the system between these two ceiling rings in this port here. And that port there, if we turn him around, you can see a drilling and that drilling goes into the clutch pack. So where they drill that from the back, I've had that come out on times, but anyway, look, for this, this video, this particular video, we're looking at the PDO brake, which we've only just removed. So, as you know, and I'll probably repeat myself a hundred times, I bought this tractor in pieces, so we don't know what it's like. Um, I took a gamble with it. It's done 3,070 hours, 73 or something like that hours. So we'll pop it apart and have a look. So the first part in pulling this apart is there's a snap ring in here. And you can see the ends of the snap ring just there. So I have an O-ring pick and a flat blade electrician screwdriver, I suppose, for want of a better word. And look, all we do is... Come in where I can actually see what I'm doing. We rock the screwdriver sideways. And then the clip just comes out. No big deal. Have a look at it and just make sure there's no little cracks or anything like that. I can't see any problem with these. They're not a common part to fail on these machines. So then we have the clutch plate and the PDO brake disc. Now, this PDO brake disc, it's the cardboard type lining. And you can see here that we have little chocolate squares missing. So what that tells me, it's not worn out. And see all these missing here. That tells me that this has had moisture in the gearbox. And I have other reasons for believing that too, um, as in some of the PDO clutch pack plates were the same. So this is unserviceable, it has to be chucked away. Um, the modern PDO um, clutch discs or clutch brake pads, they're a sprayed metal, so it doesn't matter so much. But this is unserviceable, we can't use that. That's a bit of expense we're gonna to have to go to. Now, if you pulled your screen out and you had all these little bits of dark lining like that, or sometimes you can, it'll actually come off in sheets, like that there would be a, a sheet with a corner on it, so would these. And those parts will still be together in your suction screen or down near your suction screen. So that would give you an indication that it's this. Sometimes brake plates can be the same, but over time you sort of get to know. So anyway, that's buggered in the bin. So next off is the plate that rubs against it. Now what we look for here is, you'll notice there's no shine on this side. 
it's quite dull. And then you'll notice on this side it's a bit shinier. And look, all that tells us is this is the side that the piston pushed on. And this is the wear side. This is the side that it wore on, so. Then in here, we have a piston. Now, it's an alloy piston with a couple of piston rings on it. Now I'll, I'll just try the, try and disappear a bit of light and see if it's a bit better to see here. But um, look what you can do is just dump it on the ground. Or on a piece of wood. And out she comes. So on this, we have a, a solid cast ring. You can see a little bit of swarth in there, which can be from the brake, from the brake lining coming loose. I don't know. Yeah, you can just see down through here those little dots. So that's a bit of brake lining plate. Now, inside here, this one seals on the outside, so we need to have another one there, don't we? So when we have a look inside here, there's a there's another ring here, and it's a hook ring. So look, that looks okay. I'll get that out of the way so we have a light background. Now with a hook ring, you can see that it hooks in like that, and with it hooked in like that, that actually sits in here. Um, that's captive and when the piston gets pushed has oil on oil on this side here it pushes the piston out that plate sits there it pushes the piston out and it locks this up so that this is locked up with the housing here and in doing that these piston rings move back and forth in the housing so does this one here now what do you look for here? Well, see, I think you can see the gap just there. Is that better? Yep. See the gap just there? You have a gap here, a gap here, and there's a big gap between the two bits on the hook. That means it's got plenty of wear in it left yet. As that wears, that gap gets less and less until, and you'll see, I'll see if I can give you a better explanation of that. In the, when it's in there, the piston rings are like that. And as it wears, they just open up further and further and further. So a rule of the thumb with these is when they're in the housing, um, to work out if your housing's worn or not, I usually like to take a three thou feeler gauge. And if a three thou feeler gauge will fit in there, you'll laugh and you've got a really good ring. Um, if the hooks are touching, it's all over Red Rover, chuck this out um, or have a look at your piston. Now, on your piston there on ours, you can see that grey mark just in here. That's where the piston ring has been sitting most of the time. That's okay. Now feel that. That's smooth as smooth can be. So on assembly, we'll just polish that with a little bit of 600 paper just to make sure there's nothing in there that we don't know about. Now this outer ring, it'll just roll off. And it sits in the housing here. And once it goes down into the housing, um, we're looking for a little bit of a ring gap. And well, I can't remember, but probably eight or 10 thou would be no worries. Um, the smaller, the better. As long as it's not touching, you need some gap there. So we'll pop them away for washing. Now this housing here, we haven't finished with that yet. This, there's a bearing in here, and this is this bearing uses a bit of lube oil. Lube oil comes up from the back end here, um, and it comes out these two holes, 
and those two holes help lubricate the bushes on the main clutch pack. Now, to get this apart, all we do is get the circlip pliers that are the right size for the job. Come on in there. Pop the circle about. There you go. You inspect the bearing. Ours feels a little gritty. I suspect it's just rubbish from sitting around. We'll clean that up and make sure it's okay to rock and roll. Now, this housing here, this is where our PDO clutch pack sits. And the PDO clutch pack sits down into there. And this is a form of an oil manifold to, um, from a fixed surface with an oil supply to a rotating mass. So look, all, all we're looking at in here is make sure that's nice and smooth and I can't feel any anywhere there from the um, piston rings and what we can do here is pop a piston ring back together sit him in try and get him even all the way around and once again that's a nice tight one. That's just getting stuck in there. And that's a... Oh, it'd be good if I could read it, wouldn't it? Okay, here's a tooth there that I can read. Tooth hours going in. But look, I'm not sure of the measurement, but I, I work on, um, make sure there's plenty of gap in between the two hooks when it's sitting parallel, nice and square. And you'll notice on this ring, you'll see a, a dark edge and a shiny part. Now, there's different thoughts with these, and um, you'll notice on the outside edge here, that's not very shiny. You can still see the lines from where the piston rings were new, where they were turned. There's just a slight machining mark on those still. And look, that, it doesn't get any better than that, I tell you. But um, instead of these piston rings actually sitting in here and turning around, around, around in the housing, the clutch pack turns inside the rings. So these rings end up tight in the housing and the ring, to the PDO clutch pack turns inside them. And now look, as times, as rings get worn and tension comes off, that's not the case. But at this stage, what we look for with that is just that it's nice and true um, in, in here, in the PDO brake housing. We can see the black mark where the piston ring was sitting out a little bit when it was turning and you can see the shiny mark there um, where this pack was turning inside that ring and on this ring here we can see the same thing we can see I'll see if I can get you a good picture of a good picture of that You can see the original marks there. Um, another thing you look for is because these rings, to, to get these in onto the pack there, you just bring them close and you bring one up and one down and you slide them in like that in the groove here. So what you look for as well when you're diagnosing or, or looking for trouble here, and we have to look at everything on this tractor because we bought it in bits and we don't know all that much about it. So... Where the rings sit here, we want to make sure that's not sloppy. You know, the ring's not sloppy in the housing. Ours isn't. I doubt that that little tooth hour feeler gauge would fit in there. Oh, yes, it does. 
that's firm. So that nice fit there, that stops any PDO pressure leaking away. So there you go. That's dismantling the PDO brake. Looks like we have to order some parts before we can do a video on putting it back together again. That'll be it just for this bit. We'll move on to something else.